هموم الحياة جبال ثقال ولكن بذكرك همي يزول فعند الحديث عن المصطفى لساني وثاغري صفي Nahmaduhu wa nasalli ala rasulihil kareem Amma ba'd all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Peace and salutations be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Respected viewers of Hilal TV Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to another edition of the program Riyadu Salihin Gardens of the Righteous Where we discuss the noble words of the blessed Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The chapter that we discuss in Babur Raja The chapter on having hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy as we said, it's a new year and it's all about new beginnings and renewing our hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what be better way to do that other than being inspired by the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and these wonderful narrations, messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, constant reminders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's intense mercy and how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. The last narration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we discussed a message that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave to the ummah three days prior to his demise. Jabir radiallahu anhu tells us that he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam make the statement three days prior to him leaving this world. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, none of you should die ex without him or her having good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned that the scholars tell us that when a person is young, the quality that needs to be prevalent in the youth is fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as you advance in age, then it's supposed to be hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And as you reach the latter part of your life, you have to be drawing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهُوَ يُحْسِنُ الظَّنَّ بِاللَّهِ لَا يَمُوتَنَّ أَحَدُكُمْ None of you should leave this world or pass away without having good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is one of the parting advices of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to this ummah. And we need to take hope, or we need to have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know that you've tried to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have only good to expect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That in no way ever gives a person a license to go on disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to blatantly violate the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then use the excuse that Allah is the most kind and Allah, and Allah is the most merciful. That's a foolish individual. These narrations are to give us hope for us to know that there's always another opportunity and there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. That is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that every night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends his mercy waiting for the return of the sinner of the day. And every day Allah extends His mercy throughout the entire day, awaiting the return of the one that perhaps has erred during the, the previous night. So Allah is waiting for you to come back to Him and Allah's doors are, are always open. Let's look at another narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on today's edition of Riyadh Salihin, again showing how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. And it's another message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the entire ummah. Anas radiyallahu anhu tells us that he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, قال الله تعالى, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that يا ابن آدم أو son of Adam. Allah is talking to you, Allah is talking to me, Allah is talking to the entire ummah. And Allah says that إنك ما دعوتني ورجوتني غفرت لك على ما كان منك ولا أبالي. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that O son of Adam, that I will forgive you as long as you continue supplicating to me and having hope in me. And Allah says that I will not mind, it will not matter to me. I, as long as you keep calling out to me, as long as you keep supplicating to me, and as long as you have hope in me, Allah says that I will always forgive you. That is Allah's statement to mankind that just keep making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't worry about what's going wrong. Don't worry about the mistakes. Make an effort obviously to minimize them, but keep calling out to Allah and keep having hope in Allah. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message 
to the Ummah is that continue making dua. You keep moving in the direction of going closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be deterred by the attacks of shaitan. Don't uh, lose focus in what you want to achieve. You just keep calling out to Allah and keep having hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, as long as you have that mindset, I'm going to continue forgiving you. And Allah doesn't stop there. Allah continues by saying that, Ya bana Adam, O son of Adam, that I will forgive you even if your sins reach the height of the skies. Lo balagat dhunubuka anana sama. That's the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that if your sins have to reach right up to the clouds, to the skies, Allah says that I will still forgive you. If you seek my forgiveness, I will still forgive you. And basically this narration has been explained to the extent that if your sin, your vice or your error had to be made into a commodity, you know like how we have bricks, you stack one on top of the other, or you have any commodity, you keep one or put one thing over another, you carry on, it goes high and high and high and high. So the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if your sin had to be stacked up into a commodity till it reaches the sky, the tallest skyscraper present in the world, I don't know offhand what's the length and measurement of it, but it's extremely high. But has it touched the sky? No, man hasn't touched the sky. You've got to jump. You jump into an aircraft and then you start to take off and you get higher and higher and how many thousand feet before you go above the clouds. You see those clouds that you go above when you, you, when you are in an aircraft. The Prophet, the year Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if your sins had to reach those clouds up in the sky and you seek Allah's forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I will forgive you and it means nothing to me. It's not difficult for me to forgive you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further states that if you come to me with sins equivalent to the size of the earth, do you know how big this earth is from end to end? It's huge. We, see, we know that they, they talk about the world being overpopulated, but there's such a huge portion of the earth that's empty. No one is living there. It's huge. The ocean is absolutely humongous. 70% of the earth is water. It's so big. And yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you come to me with the sins equivalent to the size of the earth, but you meet me in a condition that you have not ascribed partners to me, I will come to you with the equivalent of the earth of my forgiveness. If you come to Allah with the whole earth full of wrong, but you've not ascribed partners to Allah, you've believed in Allah, and you've had hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, Allah says, I will come to you with the whole earth full of my forgiveness. Allahu Akbar. Now, Allah doesn't just say, I will forgive you. Allah says that, I will come with the whole earth full of my forgiveness. Equivalent to your wrong will be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. And the statement that is continuously repeated in this message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah says, Wala ubali, I, I will not mind. It means that Allah will not question a person regarding your his or her wrong. That means when you seek Allah's forgiveness, Allah is not going to ask you, but why did you do that? You know, in the world, when you do something wrong to someone or you've, you've hurt another individual and then you apologize and you're remorseful and you're regretful over your action and you ask the person for forgiveness, you know, I'm really sorry, I never meant to hurt you or it was unintentional or whatever the reason was, but I'm sincerely asking you for forgiveness. But then the person will tell you, but, but why did you do that in the first place? How could you do that? Allah never does that. See the, again the difference of how intensely and how sincerely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. You violated his command. You've done something that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, greatly displeasing to him. You've angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you ask Allah for forgiveness, Allah doesn't say, but why did you do that in the first place? Allah says, you've asked me for forgiveness. It doesn't matter. I will forgive you. That is how loving and how kind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So, إِنَّكَ مَا دَعُوتَنِي وَرَجَوْتَنِي غَفَرْتُ لَكَ عَلَى مَا كَانَ مِنْكَ وَلَا أُبَالِي Allah says, two things are fundamental. Keep calling out to me. Keep making dua to Allah وَرَجَوْتَنِي and have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. You keep calling out to Him. You 
have hope in him, Allah says, I will forgive you and I will not mind. I will not question you further as to why did you do that? Allah doesn't want to make anyone feel despondent of his mercy. That is why Allah says that even if your sins have to reach the clouds and you ask Allah for forgiveness, Allah will forgive you. Allah says, if you come to me with the whole earth full of a wrong, and you've not ascribed partners to me and you seek in my forgiveness, Allah says, I will come to you with the whole earth full of my forgiveness. That is how loving and kind and merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But keep calling out to Allah and always have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Dua and hope, two very important ingredients to secure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's happiness and to secure Allah's forgiveness. Dua and have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be d distracted by anything else. So if you have weaknesses, which we all have, Kullu bani adama there's no one that's perfect. Everyone has skeletons in their closet. Leave those skeletons aside. Keep calling out to Allah and have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and you will be assured of Allah's forgiveness and Allah will be pleased with you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the understanding. That brings us to the end of today's edition of Riyadh Salihin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> فعند الحديث عن المصطفى لساني وثاغري صفي